Um, well, let's just get to it. So I thought right. it would be nice um, just to kind of get a little bit of history about you. We ever since we announced it, I suspect most people have gone on and um, gone to your website and you know found out a little right. bit more about you. So I'd love to right. just get a, kind of your general background, and then we can start asking some questions like where'd you grow up and where'd you go to school and what, how'd you yeah. find art and all of that. Um, inspiration, Absolutely. that kind of thing. Absolutely. So i um, been doing art for, I mean, ever. Um, my mom was an amazing support and art basically saved my life. Actually, I, I was about to join the army and uh, follow my mom and my dad's footsteps. Yeah. And, um, but I'd always been doing art and I had gone through like the, not the training, but uh, like doing all the testing and all of that and gotten almost place. And all I had to do was do the physical. And then my mom saw an article that Cornish was having a, an open audition and she was like, you should just try it and just see what it, you know, see what happens. And I got accepted that day. And I told the officers like, you know, I'm going to try this art thing for a little bit. It's been a passion. I don't know what I can do with it, but um, and literally like a month or so after I uh, started school, which was the same year that I was about to join the army. That's when 9-11 happened. And so I basically like completely dodged that and being recruited to fight the war. Um, and so now it's, it's like, it was like an aha moment, like, okay, well, I'm obviously supposed to be doing this. This is, this is, this is my passion. And, um, and I just really love that I can express, I guess, my viewpoints and help change perspectives or at least influence perspectives, just different ways of thinking, um, uh, because there's 7 billion people in the world. So we each have our own unique, you know, way of seeing the world. And, um, it's really fun for me to be able to figure out ways to kind of present what's in the brain here and then also see what other, you know, whether how other artists present the world as well. I think that's kind of the only way that we could really start to get to know each other is just really sharing our perspectives and then understanding and kind of, you know, being in each other's footsteps. I hope that was kind of what you were looking for. We haven't gone into like where I live and all that stuff yet, but that's basically no, kind of that's how fantastic. I what an amazing yeah. story and how yeah. fortunate you must feel to have gotten that direction at that time. And yes, I absolutely. Can't imagine having been in the military at that time. So I have friends that, yeah, it was just horrible. It was not good. So I, I definitely would have come back a complete, if I had come back at all, a uh, complete different person right. and um, very, very, very blessed <laughs> that I chose this path. Would have created some different art, I suspect after. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> <laughs> um, so are you from Seattle? And so I was born in Olympia, but Washington area. I lived in California for a little bit, um, but mostly from the Washington area. I actually lived in Moses Lake for uh, like three or four years um, during my culminative years, and then um, came back over here and did Running Start, and and then did, you know went to Cornish. So I've always been in the kind of you know Seattle, Washington State area, and. Uh, um, always looking for new ways to, you know, share the beauty uh, around the state. I love this state. It's beautiful, but we obviously, we have a lot of things to work on. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And not only here, right? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Amen to that. <laughs> yeah. And so is that kind of alluding to that? Is that sort of where you find your inspiration these days or is it, has it always been your inspiration or? I think, yes. So I get a lot of my inspiration for sure. And I'm sure every, you know, a lot of artists do too, but just your environment, um, how you grew up, um, being in a, being a black woman in a mostly, you know, white suburban area. Um, there's a lot of different stories, <laughs> a lot of different experiences that I have to draw from. Um, and you know, the nature is a way for me to just really connect into in my like internally you know i feel like art in your expression of it is 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 you know if you believe in god god given universe given all of that and um nature absolutely helps me connect with that that part of myself so me and my son you know might go hiking or go out to the beach or something and then i get an inspiration um uh, you know for a painting um or using different materials 
not just from nature, but just kind of surroundings, you know, seeing how other people create work as well um, and how they're influenced here. We have a lot of amazing artists here and art organizations here. So it's a plethora of, of inspiration for sure. Um, but uh, yeah, I, I think my, my history, my, um, you know, my heritage, being a mom, and then living in this area, for sure, I've influenced my work, for sure. For sure. I know, so did I read that your son is about eight now? Is that right? Yes, he just yeah. turned eight last month. Mm -hmm. Oh, <laughs> happy birthday. Mm -hmm. um, so how, I know you've been an artist for much longer than you've been a mom, but how yeah. did your work change when you became a mom or did it change? And is your focus different um, in the sense that you're trying to teach him something through your art? How does that all? work for you? Yeah, <laughs> great question. So uh, I would say that my work has gotten more professional because I'm a mom, because I feel like um, I, I, I need to show him that if you have a passion for something, then you go for it and don't just let it be a hobby. I mean, you can just let it be a hobby. Obviously, you can let it be what helps you get through things and um, be, at, you know, to decompress, that kind of thing. But art is such a passion for me. Like I really can't breathe without it. I really need to be doing something and creating. So I have to, he, he makes me a, a better artist because I, I have to be on top of it a little bit more. I have to take advantage of certain opportunities. Um, I don't, you know, I actually literally just quit my nine to five job right before this COVID stuff happened. And so the timing was really crazy. Um, I'd always been doing a nine to five working in the tech industry. I was at DocuSign for five years. Um, uh, I just quit ZMAX, which is like a, um, uh, what is it, like laser. They, they do a lot of work in, in, in lighting and things like that. So I always kind of had a foot in both doors, like, um, and being able to see, okay, which one is making me happy and which one is stressing me out and which one gives me a lot of joy when I'm with my son and, and that I could share with him and you know and which one just I'm just tired because I'm, I'm tired of work you know working so many hours and driving so many hours and so it was like okay well you know for my son I need to be able to have some quality time with him I need to show him he's, he's extremely creative as well he makes like flip books and all kinds of stuff and so I want him to be able to become an artist and a cartoonist and all of that and the only way you could really do that is to see an influence and I'm the, the closest one to that. So um, he definitely inspires me to say, okay, I better get on this and be more professional about it and, and share my, my, my world with the world so that he could do the same in the future. Lucky little man. <laughs> yeah, <thanks. laughs> Appreciate that. Um, <laughs> something, I can't remember what you said, something you said made me think, who are your inspirations um, artist wise maybe locally or not, not necessarily locally, but who gives you. So I locally, guess, I'll go for locally first. Yeah. Locally, there's some amazing, um, when it comes to like empowerment, um, you know, I love Alicia Johnson. Uh, so we actually went to school together and, and we were roommates and everything. Love her. Natasha Marin, um, Rachel Ferguson. She, she used to be here, uh, but she's in California now. They're all different types of artists. They all, um, do either like performance art or conceptual art or visual, um, but they all they all kind of stand in their authenticity, and I feel like that is the thing that I'm trying to go for the most with my art is being as authentic in in what I'm trying to express as possible, even if people don't really understand it. It's it's like as long as I understand it and as long as I like it, and maybe you know hopefully it does inspire other people to tap into their weirdness or whatever, uh, re weird creativity, then, then it's good for me. Um, as far as non-local, I really love Kara Walker. I just love that she does these amazing silhouettes that um, they're, they're, they're uncomfortable and beautiful. And I, I have a lot of work that's uncomfortable and beautiful. I think that I can use beauty to draw people in and then when they really start looking at it, then they're like, oh, wait a minute, that's, that's not making me feel great. <laughs> but, and not that it doesn't, not supposed to make you feel great, but like it makes you think about life in a different way or just a different perspective, something that you weren't expecting before. And I think that's so powerful to know that you have a visceral reaction to an art piece 
Um, so I'm very, very much drawn to that kind of work. I love surreal work. Um, you know, I love Ken Dinsky, uh, the abstract um, artist. I love, um, gosh, I'm blanking on so many names. There's so many names. Jake, uh, Jacob Lawrence, of course. Um, uh, gosh, there, I've, I've lost one name that's like popping in my head. But, um, oh, obviously Dali. Sal Salvador Dali is amazing. Um, I actually almost named my son Salvador Dali. And he happens to have Salvador <laughs> Dali's birthday, which is crazy. Um, so... <laughs> Yeah, so I, I love a lot of different kinds of work. I just, I think that if you're authentic and you're not just trying to be super commercially, um, which there's a place for that for for sure as well. For sure. Um, you know, it's beautiful and it, again, changes perspectives, it changes minds, all of that. But I really, really love and I'm drawn to work where you're really getting to know, you know, get to see inside the artist's brain, um, even if you don't totally understand it. It's just like, wow, how did that? person come up with that is so weird you know I love that and then they put it on paper or on canvas and that's really cool to me yeah well maybe the beauty draws you in and then you also get to learn something right absolutely yeah <laughs> get smacked in the face with some reality or something else. <laughs> one can only hope um, mm -hmm. <laughs> um so that is uh, that's a kind of an awesome broad overview of you. I know that um, so many of my questions are about what's going on on Capitol Hill, kind of how that whole thing came to be. Um, mm -hmm. I know that you were asked to be a part of the mural. Am I correct there? You were asked. Yeah. Yes. And then, mm -hmm. um, so I'll just kind of let, maybe you can have a little conversation around that. But some of the questions are, you know, how did it get organized and planned so quickly? It was shockingly quick. Um, and amazing. then how did the artists come together? Who did the choosing and how'd you get the beat? <laughs> Man, it's so nuts. And I apologize. I feel like I have allergies, like I'm about to sneeze. So I'm constantly doing this. So sorry about that's that. Okay. Um, <laughs> so um, it was so, that's what's so incredible and amazing about this situation is that it literally was like, you know how when you're just called to do a piece, like literally called from, you know, whatever you believe in, like, hey, and you don't always realize that that's what's happening at the moment. You just say, okay, let's do it. And, <laughs> and then you realize this is a lot bigger than I thought it was going to be like a lot bigger than myself. So basically how it went down was I was just sitting right here at my computer and working on some social media stuff. I'm actually going to be doing a, a mural for the Seattle Art Museum uh, this weekend. Um, so I was working on stuff for that. Yeah. Um, and I got a text message from Takia Ward and she started this thread. She's an artist here in Seattle as well. She's amazing. And she just said, Hey, uh, we had this idea. We got a space already. We're putting letters down. Um, would you like to be part of, you know, part of this mural? And I, I chimed in immediately like, yes, absolutely. Whatever, whatever we're doing, whatever you want to do, just let me know. <laughs> and uh, I think that I lucked out again. I think I was like one of the first people who chimed in because then when she said, okay, we'll, we'll tell you guys when it's going to happen. We're not sure because it's about to rain and all that. And then literally like an hour later, she's like, okay, so we have the letters down. Um, we're going to do it tomorrow. What letters do you want? Um, anybody chime in, pick first. And I was the first one. <laughs> so I was like, I'll take the B. I want the B. And uh, she's like, all right, you got the B. And then everybody else started chiming, chiming in because, you know, closed mouths don't get fed. That's like, that's something that <laughs> rings in my head all the time. Like, you got to just jump on things. Oh, no. I think I just lost my computer. Oh, there you are there. Um, no, you're here. And so... <laughs> Okay, there you go. Um, and so I wanted to do the B because it was the beginning, B for beginning of something that's really powerful. It's, you know, B is be beautiful, it's bold, it's brown, it's black, it's all these things. And I obviously knew my son was going to be with me to do it because we're all sequestered by ourselves. And um, I thought, gosh, this is going to be an amazing moment to just have with him. No matter how, we didn't realize how big, like, it, this would become, but I just sure. knew the experience itself would be a really great learning moment for him and for me and, um, and to be able to kind of just join with all these amazing artists. And um, so to kind of start off the first letter of this, such a, of such a powerful message with my black son, who I, you know, worry about and think about and um, obviously do these kinds of things for that, that was just, that had me sold basically. Um, 
yeah, I, I hope that kind of answers the question. As far as like design is concerned, we just knew that it was going to be seen, you know, from an aerial point of view. And we wanted to make sure that we do some really, you know, uh, bold designs. Um, I'm all about pyramids and triangles and mountains and repetition, you know, uh, fabrics from Africa, different kinds of patterns, tessellation, all of that. And um, so I was just like, what is the quickest thing, easiest thing, but also a really powerful thing that I could put on there? And um, you know, triangles and mountain peaks and that kind of thing. That's what it, it was. That's kind of an abstract version of what I was doing and arrows to, about moving forward and pro progress. Um, so I started that night, same night, just cutting up some stencils. I was like, I hope this comes in handy. And then once we got there, it's like, <laughs> okay, it works. Good. It's gonna work. It works. <laughs> you know, because we didn't know how big the letters were going to be or anything. Like it literally came together in two days. Kia and Joe Nix is the, the other artist that uh, she worked with. Um, they just had the idea like, oh, wait, they did that in DC. Let's do it here. Got together. Okay. I don't even, it was a, yeah, like within the day, like, and then found, they had a, another contact um, who's a, a person who does signage and they said, okay, well, how big should we make it? You know, and then they got the okay and started doing it. And, you know, I think that if we had, if we hadn't had CHOP, it wouldn't have happened so quickly, mm. right? We would have had to get all the permits and all the, every, I'm assuming, I shouldn't say that that's not what would happen, but I would assume that because we're in such a moment right now of like yeah. solidarity and trying to, you know, support each other, that's why it was able to just go down and we were all like, okay, we'll be there tomorrow. No problem. Let's do it. And the crazy thing is when we got there, uh, me and my son, I was just bringing a bunch of paints and stuff and, uh, didn't realize how many people would be down there and so we got there and it was just thousands of people just standing there waiting to watch us paint and I was like oh this is what this is okay all right wow. I'm game let's it's do performance it art. <laughs> it was it really was and it was a beautiful thing and it was really cool to have my son Malcolm there and um and you know and we paint I, I painted mine for about eight hours um other people had wow. to you know were there for a little bit longer but i was very sore for like three days after that but um yeah you, it was, have, you know honestly yeah i can't remember in the time lapse did did malcolm help you was it just you he did yeah i thought no, he i did. saw him he in the time me. lapse yeah <laughs> he did yeah he helped me do some like a lot of the sprinkles and stuff and yeah, yeah um okay yeah and like if you look closely on one of the pictures i have we have um our handprint but then also above yes. the handprint you have his footprints on there because he but less his heart he was tired and he was like walking in pain i was like babe <laughs> but it was cool i was like this yeah. is great keep, okay <laughs> we'll keep it in there you know um yeah, it was, uh, it was, it was, again, it was an amazing moment. And I think that honestly, it's been really hard to discuss with him. He, he's, a, he has autism and, you know, it's like his superpower basically, but there's definitely challenges that come with that and, and how he navigate, navigates the world and us having conversations about this movement and racism and all of that, we've had him, you know, here and there but it's been difficult for him to sometimes grasp certain things like why? And I'm like, I don't know why, baby, I'm sorry. It's just, it's, it, it is right now. This is what we have to deal with and handle. Um, but him participating in that made it a lot more solid, like, Oh, okay. Now I understand. And now I understand too, that there's, there's not everybody hates us. There's a lot of people here that absolutely believe in my life and my, my, you know, how, how valuable we are. Um, and that our lives matter. And um, that was really cool. And, 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 and people just coming up and, and, and wanting to help him and be there for him. And yeah, yeah, it was an amazing moment. That is sure. really amazing. Oh, yeah. Hopefully the good will come. I, you know, I mean, it takes us all, you know, the thing is, it's, it's just the beginning. And um, it's an important and impactful and empower and empowering statement. Um, but there's so many layers to it. It's like, it's not just the killing of black lives and, and, and it's still happening. You know, there's been like 20, I think 20 new murders since the George Floyd death. Yeah, I mean, we're right. still, that, that's, that's, and, and for a black person and a black mother, especially to keep being reiterated, inundated 
with those visuals, with those stories constantly, that is something that as a black mom, I can't stop having a reaction to and thinking about, right? It's a constant like aggression that keeps poking me. And it's very overwhelming and it's every day. And it's, it's good that we're finally getting a voice that people are like, oh, I guess I should listen now. But the thing is, the work is everybody has to participate in it. We're all in this mm-hmm. together. We're all in the world together. We all have to share it together. And it's not just a statement. It's not just a fad. It's not, it's a, hey, help make this a safe world and also a fair world. I want to be able to own property. I want to be able to, you know, pay for my son's college. I want to, I should have Amen. those luxuries. You know, I work just as hard, if not harder, you know, right. dealing with all this stuff. And, um, and I should definitely, and I don't want to be told to be quiet when I want to speak up. Hey, this is not cool. This is not fair. I've been pulled over by five, six cops with guns drawn on me and them telling me I stole my car. It's extremely oh, scary. Goodness. And, um, and, and obviously I didn't, I had just bought the car. It was really scary. And, um, and I don't, and I fear for Malcolm having to do that. Yeah. You know, and, and the thing is, it's like, it's not a new thing, you know, and and I was lucky to walk away with my life. (laughs) You know, I was really, really blessed. There's people that just don't. And, um, so it's, it's, it's opening the eyes, uh, you know, of the people who actually have a power. I feel like people don't think that they have power that they actually do have. And I think that's the message uh, that we're trying to also convey, like y'all, everybody on this call, everybody (laughs) has power, you know, to help your black friends, to help other black people, other people of color, change your own perspective, do your own research, go watch movies, go watch Selma, go watch, you know, go yeah. read some amazing black women, you know, books, authors, you know, and get a perspective and an understanding yeah. of where you fit in in the world and, and how you oh. mold it and what your participation in this has been, even if you didn't know it. Right. Yeah. I, um, I yeah, I fully agree. I mean, I think that there are those of out, those of us out here who do have the power, but didn't, necessarily understand that we did until now yeah. which is unfortunate right. we all have to right. start someplace and right move forward but now you know it's it better but now we know now you know yeah no don't go on hide again um well while you've been talking that conversation right there just brought up a bunch of questions so i'm just gonna read through a couple if you're okay with that yeah that's great. Um, yeah, so um, one is how does your admiration of beautiful and uncomfortable play out in your own work? Oh, great question. I'll give you an example. So I was at Cornish um, and I was doing a pretty uh, printmaking class, one of my very favorite things to do. And I was, I made these carvings. I, so I was, I've always been kind of a rebel with my father. I love, my father has passed away, but both my parents are, so, but um, I loved I loved messing with him <laughs> and <laughs> making him like, like roll his eyes and be annoyed. But because I knew underneath he he really loved me and, and saw my artistic ability and everything, but I just knew I was poking the bear a lot. So <laughs> I would put in like sexual images, <laughs> um, but then like hide them. And then I'd be like, dad, I want you to look at this painting And he's like, oh, my God, that's beautiful. What is that? I'll be like, that is a penis going into a vagina. And he'd be like, wait, what? (laughs) And and it was, and we're all adults in the conversation, right? We could talk like this. Um, Yes, yes, yes. Okay, great. Um, But but he eventually really loved, like, really loved that. He was like, wow, okay, I see what you're trying to do here. I love that. And so I made these uh, woodblock paintings, uh, woodblocks, uh, carvings rather, um, and they were all like flowers and lots of different kinds of like foliage and stuff, but it all had to do with like sex and, and pro- procreation and, and everything. And I, I, I had them hanging um, in this elevator area at Cornish and bless these beautiful um, elderly women. They had come up and they were looking at my work one day and they were just wow just in awe like these are beautiful and I just remember thinking to myself like they're staring at a penis right now this is hilarious and I loved that they didn't know that I didn't tell them either I didn't want to you know at that moment I didn't want to ruin it for them they were just like these are pretty flowers gorgeous but I just loved that I knew something there was like a secret 
in the work. And I love work that um, when I look at it over and over again, there's something new that I find in it. And so I just started kind of hiding little secrets in the work and then started using symbolism in the work. And um, so I have uh, mosaics that, you know, um, symbolize um, uh, using black bodies for medical malpractice. But mm. when you look at it at first, it just looks like beautiful women being showered with rain. Um, but when you really look closer, it's actually like chemicals that are being poured on them and are being buried and, you know, and again, I think that we live in such a white, we do live in a whitewashed world <laughs> and also a, I think we'd all agree. Yeah, you know, and, and, you know, there's this, this thought of like, oh, I wish it was like the good old days in the fifties and the sixties. Well, there wasn't good old days for black people back then, number one. Um, but there's this idea of what Americana is and, and just America the beautiful and all that. And we don't always address the ugly underbelly of it. And so I like to kind of use that in my work where you just look at something on the surface, you're like, oh, it's really beautiful. And then if you're, you know, perceptive enough or you, you want to be and you're open, um, then you might start to see like, oh, there's some, you know, uncomfortable truths here. And hopefully the goal is to then kind of change some brain patterns for you and ch change some synapses there. And have you just rethink of things and maybe inspire to go check out other artists that are doing certain things that may have made you more uncomfortable because they were a lot more in your face, but now you've been kind of eased into it, you know, and yeah. now you can kind of be more open to receiving that kind of information. One of the comments that I got was, it seems as if power, as if the power of art can give voice to equality as we go forward in the new world. And Absolutely. We'll keep our fingers Absolutely. crossed for that, right? <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. You know, support your artists. I think that's the thing. It's, um, yeah, it's, I, I always, I always have my fingers crossed for sure. Um, I think the thing that I'm learning right now too, though, is you can do little things to make a huge impact. And, you know, whether it is marching or buying from black businesses or other, you know, people of color, just supporting other people of color as well. Um, those little things make a huge impact. It really does. Getting visibility um, is huge. You know, the art world in, in general, uh, there's not a lot of black people in the art world. And it's not that there's a lack of black artists. It's because right. there's a lack of black leadership and recognition, yeah. <laughs> and, recognition and opportunities, you know, and so now it's like, okay, well, this is the art world's part in it. When you put information, when you put visuals out there, and that's what people have to digest, if you're only putting visuals or perspectives from white people, then that's mm -hmm. what molds the community and molds the country, right? But when you're putting out, you know, perspectives and art of black people, of people of color, of oppressed people, then that's when you start to kind of click, it starts to click. And then it's not so hard to really understand or um, start to see other people's like, you know, um, wh why they're protesting. I can, I yeah. can absolutely see why sometimes people are like, what is going on? I don't understand. Well, it's because you never read a, a book by a black author. It's because right. you never really went to a show for, you know, by a black artist. That's, and that's on you, you know, and, yeah. and it's on, and it's on the, 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 the artist community as well um and it's on all of us it's you know it's just when you have artists putting out the perspective you got to go look at it and then you can you can get a better sure. sense of it then you get to start to change right yeah my goodness deep thoughts <laughs> <laughs> good but good no all good um so uh, I have some actually kind of simple questions for you that aren't so deep, if that's okay. okay um, yeah. And they're about the mural. One is, um, is, well, can, do you have a, do you have just a photo of the bee? Somebody wants us to, can you share Aww. that with us? Um, Thank and, you. <laughs> and then um, logistically, somebody wanted to know if you guys had to use special paint. And then the other was kind of uh, more interaction. Somebody asked, can you talk about your interactions with the other artists that painted as you painted? Yeah. What was that like? Did you know everybody? Did you know of everybody? 
I knew uh, a few of the people for sure. Um, we, we all know each other in a way that we all know the other person. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like we know an sure. artist who knows an artist who knows an artist kind of thing. I know Takiya Ward. I know Aramis Hamer. I know um, uh, the Curly Nugget. I know there's a, <laughs> there's a few for sure. Um, her name is Perry. Um, and uh, But some of the artists, no, I, I wasn't familiar yet, with uh, yet. And so that's what's really interesting. We actually all just met up again two days ago because oh, cool. we were like yeah because we we're like wow all of us literally just came down here and then did our thing and then we bounced because we were tired and it was a long day sure. and, you know and but we didn't really have a moment to like <sighs> breathe in the, you know and decompress and excuse me I know that when I was painting I was only able to walk away to really take my son to go to the bathroom <laughs> or get like snacks um but I didn't really get to like really walk around and watch people doing their thing because I was doing mine so um yeah so we actually now we're on it we've been on a thread ever since um uh on instagram and to answer the question for the prints thank you so much whoever asked that it's really sweet we are we're working with a printmaker right now to get really nice images of each letter to get images of the full image because we've already unfortunately um seeing people, non-POC, non-Black people benefit and profit off of our work. And so I kind of had to put a little PSA on my Instagram. So if you guys go to my Instagram, make sure you follow me. Um, but when you go on my Instagram, there's like a little PSA. And I definitely recommend just watching it because it's, it is important to know that, you know, yes, this was an amazing moment, but do not profit off of you know, our, our Black lives and our Black effort and, you know, without consulting us. Indeed. I think that's kind of basic, but, you know, I don't know. People, you know, again, people it's, it's so weird to have to, <laughs> yeah, you know, and, and the thing is, it's, it's so, it's kind of crazy that we actually have to say Black Lives Matter, right? Like, that's kind of, it's kind of like a duh, like, we should just know that and think that and that everybody's, you know, everybody's life matters. Yeah, but, but, be, but because it's shown over and over and over again that black people's lives really don't matter, that we just move on really quickly, um, that we just get overlooked for opportunities. Um, you know, people just take over and take advantage of uh, making a profit off of us. That's what that whole statement is about. So to then go profit off of our work on this is like, wait, come on guys, like really? So we had to call out a few people and they were really, you know, apologetic and everything, but like, it was just like, oh, God, this is exhausting. Um, <laughs> so we, so we are working with uh, getting a copyright on that. And yeah, if you follow um, Takia Ward, which her Instagram is TB Customs, she's the one, her and Joe.nix um, on Instagram, they're the ones that really organize this whole thing. So I definitely mm -hmm. recommend, yeah, uh, reaching them. out to them. Yeah, and following them um, to get you know, access to prints. But within the next week, I say, I think we're supposed to all meet up uh, next week to sign a limited edition oh, of cool. the prints. Yeah, so there'll be like 500 or so limited edition prints with all the artist signatures on them. And those will be for sale. And then the individual letters so for the B for me, I will also have prints that I'll be able to sell on my website. So I'm hoping to get that within a week. And, um, and again, I really appreciate whoever was interested <laughs> in that. Thank you. Yeah. Um, so when that happens, is that something that you guys are, um, has the group come together to give a portion of the proceeds to a particular cause? There's so many out there right now I know. that have to do with yeah. BLM that um, yeah. I would, I kind of wonder how you get that many artists, that many people on the same page with where they would like to give money <laughs> yeah no that's a great question so that's we're kind of leaving so again we're on this thread right now and we've gotten a lot of donations because none of us took a pay it took any pay to do this so just so everybody knows that too like we just were asked and we were called and we were like yeah let's do it we were reimbursed for whatever we put in like paints and stuff but other than that we didn't get any Not kind of payment time not for our time and it was a lot of time you know a lot sure. of effort there um and so um we, we've raised a lot of money for future mural projects and then also working with um some of the people that are organizing with the chop as well um we're still trying to figure out should we donate to the black lives matter 
movement or are there specific individual organizations here within Seattle? Um, a lot of it has to do with getting people out of jail, making sure that people have food and water when they're protesting, all of that. Um, so I don't have all the, the logistics on that just yet. Takia Ward is definitely a better person to connect with on that. But um, yeah, we have not we have not received any compensation. It's It's literally just been all right, donations so we could do this more often and spread the message far and wide, but then also help That's those awesome. who are actually on, yeah, on the, you know, the front lines. That's awesome. Um, yeah. So really quickly back to your Instagram, is it at Kamisha Turner and yes. at Kamisha Creates as well? Is there one you prefer? So, oh, <laughs> actually, thank you for saying that. I actually forgot I had at Kamisha Creates. Yeah, go to Kamisha <laughs> Turner. I got to take that one down. Um, yeah, go to Kamisha Turner, um, at Kamisha Turner, and uh, my website is KamishaTurner.com. And then on, on my post, you also see all the other Instagram follower uh, handles of all the other artists as well. Oh, so that perfect. way, yeah, if you go to like the video of the Black Lives Matter thing, I'm trying to put that on every single one of them because everybody deserves, you know, some really great credit and stuff. So, um, sure. yeah. Hopefully the awareness around all of you guys starts to really grow and you get some momentum from this. Yeah, I hope so. And, you know, I think that the thing is too, it's all, it's also balancing like the attention is amazing and it's been really fast and kind of crazy. Um, but also wanting to make sure that the attention is really on the, the message too. Like, obviously I want to do more work and more murals and sell art and everything, but also just making sure that people understand why, why are we doing this? Why is it so important for us to put these big old block letters? Not, not just, it's not a fad. Again, it's not just to be in the moment. It's, Hey, we're trying to wake y'all up, you know, and wake ourselves up too. Cause we all have stuff to learn from each other. Right. So, Amen. um, so yeah, it does feel different. As, yeah, I agree. It does feel different. Yeah. Um, uh, our, our social media gal is asking if it's okay if we use your time lapse video. Oh, please do. To post, Thank on, you. Our, to post on our social media. Yeah, that'd be great. That's okay, awesome. Cool. <laughs> I appreciate that. Yeah. And actually what um, I can do is I can show you guys, um, I, I'm probably, I'm probably not going to do a time lapse, but I'll definitely take some pictures of the other mural that I'll be doing at Seattle Art Museum. And so I can, you know, send you guys a few of those too, if you wanted to put those up once I get that done this weekend. We would love that. Absolutely. For sure. Um, yeah. We, yeah. Um, so, uh, gosh, I think that's, I think I've kind of, sorry, I've mixed between your, you know, I'm trying to get everybody's messages in here. <laughs> I keep getting all these things coming through. I'm trying to consolidate them. because. Oh, that's nice. The same. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, um, gosh, from the bottom of my heart, I think everyone else's, I would love to say thank you so much for taking the time. I think we took probably too much of it, but, um, oh, oh, yeah. everything, yeah, everything you have to say is so relevant and current and we appreciate your thoughts on the matter. Um, gosh, I would ask everybody on the call to unmute themselves just to say thanks to Kamisha for joining us today. And, um, uh, thank you, and, guys. Uh, yeah. <laughs> thank you. It's fascinating. Good luck. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you so much.